Hi, this is Barbara Scott. Um, I'm children's librarian at Bucyrus Public Library. I've been here for 33 years, and over the past five years, we have had a wildly successful music movement and more program where we move and groove a lot. Um, this first slide that you're seeing is our unofficial clip art. It's just something that I found online. So uh, this is what we use for all of our um, PR, whether it's in-house or flyers that we send out. Next. This program had its roots as a Help Me Grow offering in 2010. It was a collaborative effort. Um, Lynn Bills, who was a parent mentor and worked in other capacities for Help Me Grow, uh, was the trained music garden teacher. And what our library did be, uh, in 2010 to 2013 was we provided the space for her program. Next. And then here's the space where we held our classes from 2010 to 2013. We typically had anywhere from six to eight folks, and that would be parents and kids. Sometimes we had as small as just a mom and a child. Lynn's position was done away with in 2013, and her funding was lost. And I felt at this point that this program was too important. So next, here is our community connection and our partnership. In 2013, I applied for a United Way grant. Um, this was a first for our local United Way. As up until the year before, they had not funded any education projects in our community. So we were very, very excited to get uh, the support from the United Way. Next. Since we could not uh, use the Tots, Tales, and Tunes name, uh, I had to come up with a, a name change. And what we came up with was music, movement, and more, uh, keeping the alliteration. Uh, this program is advertised through the local media. Our local Help Me Grow sends out flyers. And we also have a parent-created Facebook page. Just a little bit about the program. We offer three 10-week sessions per year. Uh, we do the same 10 songs each week for 10 weeks. And each of those 10-week sessions has a theme that we work with. Families who attend seven or more of the 10-week uh, sessions get an instrument of some sort to take home, whether it's maracas, sand blocks, scarves, uh, et cetera. Our hope is that they will recreate the experience of the class at home. Next. What does music provide, or in other words, why you should do a program like this? Um, I want to start out by saying that um, United Way provides us with around $5,600 to $5,800 um, in each uh, a, a yearly check. Um, it's broken down into uh, quarterly checks from them. And that's our funding for the year. It pays Lynn a stipend uh, each 10 weeks. Uh, it also helps me to buy um, instruments that we need uh, to give away and also any other incidentals, such as extra instruments that we might need. Or in one of our classes, I needed a second parachute, so that some of those funds went for that. Next. So here's the first um, why you should do a class like this, um, listening skills. This class involves listening skills. Uh, the kids are listening for cues or directions in the music, as well as, fr as from each of us instructors. Uh, the participants are learning to focus, listen, and stay on task. This is all connected to future academic performance. Next, cultural sharing. There is exposure to the musical heritage of many cultures and eras. We've introduced jazz and Zydeco music. For example, Lori Berkner's I Know a Chicken is jazz music, and we made a big deal. Hey, your kids are listening to jazz music. And also, one of our classes, we did the Mexican hat dance that had some language, Spanish language in it. And uh, the culture sharing helps learning other languages as well. Music helps to develop that portion of the brain that's responsible for language development. Next. Physical knowledge, for example, the importance of crossing the midline. This is something that we stress a lot of when we see the kids doing it. Um, it's developing a dominant hand for writing, which makes it easier when the kids are learning handwriting and reading. And it's making the two hemispheres of the brain work together. Next, listening skills part two. 
Uh, listening skills, again, uh, the kids, as you can see in this slide, are learning to sit and listen to a story in a group session. There is also language development going on, and we're building phonological awareness, print awareness, and vocabulary, all those building blocks of early literacy skills. Next, cognitive development. A child's brain is 85% of its adult size by age three, 90% by age five. There are connections and synapses being made at lightning speed during these years. Music improves reasoning skills because it requires the use of both sides of the brain. Next, appreciation. Uh, the kiddos are learning appreciation of three things, music, literature, and each other. Next, motor development. And this is one of my favorite slides with Becca and her dad. Body awareness, coordination, motor skills, both large and small, we work on those. Playing of instruments and learning rhythmic movement develops dexterity and coordination between the ear, the brain, and the body. Next. Um, Self-esteem. This helps many kiddos overcome shyness and gives them a sense of accomplishment. We praise participants a lot for being good helpers when we gather up the instruments, and it's a boost of confidence for them. Next. Social interaction. This is a multi-age setting. We have anywhere from babes in arms, preschool kids, and some older siblings who attend. There is interaction with both other adults and peers, and there is learning how to respect others and cooperate as a group. Next, strong bond between parent and child. Our classes are comprised of parents and children, caregivers and children, grandparents and children, which we could say our classes are intergenerational, and also we have uh, sometimes have dads in the evening class, and we tend to make a big deal when they show up. Next, um, yearly attendance figures. Um, this is something that I wanted to put out there because you'll see how the program has grown over five years. In 2013, we had 346 folks through the three 10-week sessions of our program. This was the first year with United Way funding. Next, 2014, 1,422 folks through the program. As you can see, word got out. Next, 2015, 1,402, not too far off from the year before. Next, 2016, oh my, 2,532 folks. Next, 2017, 1,936 folks. Next, and so far in 2018, as of this past week's sessions, and as I'm recording this, we are uh, hitting a midway point in our 10-week sessions. We have had 1,741 folks through this year to date. And next, that's a five-year grand total so far of 9,754 folks. And I am quite confident that by the end of 2018, we will be close to or over 10,000 folks through our program in five years. Uh, I'm excited to say that we have a satellite program at another nearby library, which bumps us up to three classes per week, the two we do here at my library, and then the satellite program. And we also have interest from a local preschool now that wants us to possibly come in and do the program with them. Next. It's all about leveling the playing field. We serve all income brackets, zero to 10,000 to over, over 70,000 a year. We know that there are programs out there like this one, but they typically cost 150 to $200. Um, I was speaking with someone at the recent ALSK Institute that said that her daughter was taking a similar four-week program. It was $200. What we're doing is leveling the playing field for everyone. Next. The graphic that you see, it says what a dollar buys. This is a graphic that our local United Way uses, and we are at the top of their list. What matters more, a $5 cup of coffee or 
that four children attend music class in Crawford County. And um, we are in our fifth year of United Way funding. Next. This is uh, my contact information. Please feel free to call me or email me um, at the uh, phone number or the address listed. Um, I would be happy to pass on any information to you about our Music Movement and More program. And then the last thing that I would like to do is um, read to you a letter that is from a um, retired educator. And it gives a lot of validation to what we do. She actually came in and observed one of our programs, and here is what she wrote. To whom it may concern. I would like to express my endorsement of the program hosted by the Bucyrus Public Library, Music Movement, and more. I am a retired educator of 29 years, specializing in special needs, preschool, and early intervention grant programs. This program meets all of the requirements for early literacy skills, listening, speaking, reading, by having the visual cues on the computer monitor with the song lyrics and movements, and intentionally working on beginning sounds of words. It is a great combination of visual, auditory, and kinesthetic activity and movement to enhance a variety of learning styles for these young shakers and movers. They use movement, egg shakers, parachutes, wands to illustrate directional movement. There is also repetition and review, which is so important for learning. This happens within one individual session and then is built on from week to week as the same theme songs and movements are shared and learned. The consistency of expectations from the two leaders, Barb Scott, the local librarian, and Lynn Bills, the music resource person, include sharing, taking turns, following directions, listening, consistency and expected behavior, patterning, counting. This program has it all. How very fortunate for this community to have such a valuable resource that is free and open to the public to serve their future citizens. A key objective in this program is for the child and parent to learn to interact together and for the children to learn to interact with other children. The component of involving the child's caregiver is key. They are using the library's website to post where the songs, jingles, etc. can be found, so there is a potential carryover at home for the young participants and their families. This is a great precursor that can transfer to a school setting where family and parents are valued and a part of the child's early education. Hopefully by setting this example at an early age, family involvement will naturally evolve in their child's lifelong education and will become a normal component. Kudos to Lynn Bills who spends hours creating the PowerPoints that display the sequence of songs and jingles that align with the theme for each 10-week session that is hosted by the Bucyrus Public Library. She is very gifted in this area of technology, music, and knowing children. Barb Scott adds helpful hints during the program and ends the 45-minute class time with a read-aloud book that is appropriate and dovetails nicely with the theme. It is obvious by observing these two women and seeing them in action that they work well together as a team. Again, this was a, a retired educator. I just needed to share that because it validates so much of what we do. Um, like I said, feel free to contact me either by phone or email, and I would be happy to answer any questions that you may have about our music and movement program. Thank you very much. Hi, Barbara. That was wonderful. Um, and I just have a, a quick follow-up, and, and this is Noah Lenstra of the Let's Move in Libraries initiative. Uh, so I'm, I, I took us back to your slide number nine uh, that has physical knowledge, for example, the importance of crossing the midline, um, mm -hmm. and then the picture of you and Lynn. Um, and so if you wouldn't mind, could you mind just uh, telling us a little bit about how you set up the room um, and, uh, yeah, just kind of the, the physical setup that you, you use for your program? Sure, absolutely. I'd be happy to. Um, we have, uh, we, uh, our Humble Beginnings room was never big enough once we started growing. Um, we use a, a meeting room that normally holds about 125 people. It gives us a lot of room to move. Um, we have... Um, Myself and Lynn, um, one of us is on one side of a uh, projector, one's on the other side, so we basically have the two of us as leaders um, doing uh, the same thing, the same motions, singing along with the same songs. We have a, um, a projector in between us that shows the, the uh, lyrics 
uh, on a smart board, um, or you could just use a screen if you don't have a smart board. Um, but that way, um, all the parents know all the words to all of the songs. It was it was kind of really funny when we started out doing it, and we had the smaller classes. Um, we had the words just on pieces of paper that were uh, taped to like a, a piece of construction paper and laminated, and we were always so afraid that the kids would slip on those, or one little girl in one of our classes just loved to take one pile of papers and put them in another place, and one pile of papers and put them in another place. She wasn't getting anything out of the class, so that's when we started doing the PowerPoint. That way everybody has access to the words, uh, to the songs. And while I'm doing the singing and moving uh, as we're doing the songs, I'm also advancing the slides as well. Great. Thanks very much. I'm sure people will be really interested in, in hearing more about kind of the, the physical setup. Um, and one other question that came up during the Institute um, uh, was kind of what are the ways that you use the United Way funding? So you mentioned kind of the purchasing of the instruments. Could you tell us a little bit more about kind of um, uh, how you how you use that uh, funding from United Way to support the program? Sure. That funding goes um, each um, 10-week session. I uh, give Lynn a stipend to have done the session. Um, we buy the instruments the kids get to take home. I order those through Music Garden. Uh, the best way to get them is they have like a bulk um, package of some of them, like their sand blocks and their bells and things. We used to buy the pre-made kits that have the CDs in them, but we don't do that anymore because you can get the bulk instruments for the same price as one of those kits. Um, so we buy the instruments that we give away, and then if there are any incidentals, such as buying more scarves or an extra parachute, or if we need more sticks, or when we did the Mexican hat dance and we needed two sombreros, one for each side of the room, money from the United Way funds went to buy those particular things. Great, great. Thanks again. Um, those are all the questions I have. Was there any um, other uh, things that you wanted to mention before, before we end for today, Barbara? Uh, just wanted to say, and this is a question that I get a lot when I've when I've talked about this program. We typically do anywhere from um, 13 to 15 songs in our 45-minute program, um, and that's been pretty much a, a standard amount of songs that we do. And we pull from all sorts of, of, of folks. We love Jim Gill. We love Lori Berkner. We love Greg and Steve. Uh, Lynn and I both have access to a fairly large uh, library of, of songs. So once we figure out what our theme is going to be, then we go in search of songs to fit that theme. And um, as I'm speaking to you um, right now, our theme that we're halfway through this time is more silly songs. So we're doing, we don't tell the uh, parents when they show up that it's sort of an adult aerobics class <laughs> because it really kind of is <laughs> when the parents start getting involved. But we have such fun with it, and it's just wonderful to see the kids, especially uh, one little boy that came to story time this morning. He used to just kind of stand and watch, but as I've, I've noticed him over the weeks that he's been coming, he's getting more into it, he's doing the motions, and it's just, it's, it's great to see. Great, great. And, and one, one final quick question. Uh, um, what, how do you, what are the age ranges of, uh, of the children that participate in the program? Babes in arms, up through preschool, some older brothers and sisters as well. There are benefits from mom holding that baby in her arms and the baby hearing the vibrations of her voice as she's singing. Um, just even simple bouncing up and down if it's not, if it's an activity, let's say for the parachute, if mom can hold that baby and just stand there and bounce that baby up and down, it's just that movement and like I said, the, the vibration, the sound of her voice. So there's just all kinds of ways that, that parents can um, tailor the experience to the age of their kids. Great, great. Thanks again. Um, and again, uh, we have on the screen uh, Barbara Scott's contact information, and so please do reach out to her if you have additional questions. Um, uh, this has been just wonderful, um, and, and thank you so much for your time, Barbara. Again, this is Noah Lenstra uh, of Let's Move in Libraries, um, and uh, hope you all will try this program at your libraries. Uh, thank you for your time.